I, I, th I think it's interesting that the Bible doesn't include a list of the apostles' teaching because I think, I think there are things that are always true, but there are also things that he is saying now that he wasn't emphasizing in a previous season. So it's wonderful that we could come together three generations. So I want to proceed recognizing that God has chosen you and appointed you to bear much and lasting fruit in this Lakeland revival and revival around the world, recognizing that he has called you as an Ephesian for an evangelist and a revivalist moving in signs and wonders, knowing that you have walked in a manner worthy of the Lord, pleasing Jesus in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, and growing in the intimacy and knowledge of God, we as your brothers and your friends who have a deep love for you, Shauna, your whole family, we just esteem you. We are here to stand with you, support you, and we are here to commission you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the power of Jesus' name with special oil from Chuck Pierce. It's called Revival Oil. Chuck could not make it, but he sent this FedEx special oil for you. A lot of that is extremely troubling to me, extremely troubling to me. Backing up a bit, the use of apostles today, you know, you can imagine from my past experience on being under a guy who considered himself an apostle and got more and more cultic. They actually changed the bylaws at some point right after we left to say anybody that leaves without the elder's blessing is in rebellion against God. I mean, uh, just ridiculous. And there are some seeds in some of the apostolic networks like that for example when you take psalm 133 about how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity it's like the oil trip goes down the beard i've heard uh, one teaching that says that that's clearly uh, discussing apostolic headship and the anointing flows down from the head to those under the authority that is that is heretical to me. I don't mm -hmm. I don't believe that. We have the gift of the Holy Spirit and the, and the anointing of the Holy Spirit through our faith in Christ. Jesus wasn't talking using the centurion as an example of a church hierarchy. He was admiring the faith of of a man who who knew that Jesus could do anything, and uh, so that's really troublesome to me. On the positive side of apostolic, I mean, the words ap apostle means, you know, I mean, some people use the word superintendent in a denomination where they have some authority oversight over a bunch of churches. Others might use apostle and others might use, uh, you know, bishop. Uh, but, but. So I want to get underneath what they mean by the word apostle. I think the uh, I think if it means just uh, some authority, you know, like you're a church planter and you planted a bunch of churches and there are people that are under under the you know your uh, leadership to kind of develop, you know, I, I can see that. I don't see any repeating of Paul and the other apostles. Or prophets in this, you know, scripture, uh, church founded on the Old and New Testaments, and Jesus Christ, the cornerstone. Anybody that means that is is heretical right off the bat. Um, so, so what the apostolic, apostolic networks trouble me in the sense of there's a degree of elitism and and pride that's built into that. Like denominations are. You know, they're, they're, they're in the past. I went to a Peter Wagner thing about post-denominational. I was, and it troubled me a lot. I didn't like what I heard. Uh, it's kind of like, we're the spirit-filled people. You know, we're doing the God thing. That same thing happened in Christian growth ministries back, back in the 70s. And uh, huge, huge damage done to many, many people. So I'm very wary of anything that smacks of that kind of authority control over over people like that. Okay. Anyway, and, go ahead. 
And sad to say, this is actually uh, comes from coveringandauthority.com, which is uh, John Bevere's website for his book, Undercover, where he's talking about covering theology. And he, on the, on the homepage, when he highlights the key points of the book, he emphasizes uh, the fivefold ministry of apostle, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers represents God's authority on earth. And rebellion to authority opens one up to the demonic realm, resulting in deception. Uh, people should live by the principle of obedience rather than reason. God does not judge people on the fruit of their life, but on how faithfully they followed authority. And those outside the local church and the covering of its leaders are at serious risk of spiritual attack. And did, he, did he actually, does he actually believe that? Yeah, it's, on, it's actually on the back of his yeah. book. The The church I was part of, that, that was required reading, that very book. Oh, my goodness. I, I'd forgotten just how bad it was. I, I used to have a copy, but I had a, uh, a mouse attack a few years back, and I lost hundreds of books. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael, it was your website that uh, took me to that, uh, that other website, one of your previous articles on covering theology. <clears throat> Well, one, one thing is clear in the Bible, the New Testament. Jesus is not an absentee Lord, and he doesn't need a, a, a designated Lord to take his place. Amen. Whenever you put a human being in the place exercising the Lordship of Jesus, you have created um, an idol, mm -hmm. an idolatrous system, because... The purpose of leaders is to equip the saints and bring us into a mature relationship with God yeah. and, and uh, to require obedience, blind obedience to human leaders is definitely cultic. Definitely. Yeah, really. cultic. And in fact, um, you know, it reminds me a lot of my conversations with uh, people in the LDS church. And, you know, they're very big on we have a living prophet. And I say, I do, too. And they go, oh, really? Who's your living prophet? I say, Jesus. That's right. Jesus, he, Jesus is, is, is my prophet. He is my high priest. He is my savior. He is my king. He is my friend. My Lord. And I have no need of anybody except for him. He's our mediator. Yeah. Yeah. So Jesus is present and he, he ex ex exerts, manifests his lordship through the word of God in conjunction with the Holy Spirit, and we don't need anybody in the way of that. Absolutely. I, I totally agree, and I'm, I'm very happy to hear you say that. So, <laughs> I think that'll clarify. I, I think some of the things that you said will help for the audience, and because you also brought in the fact, both with prophesying and with apostleship, what do they mean when they say that? Because right. uh, I, I do know that, you know, send out one. So church planners mm -hmm. often or missionaries or in, in some right. cases, like you said, a term that they use to describe somebody who is overseen and helpful mm -hmm. to uh, several churches at once. And so that that's definitely not what we're talking about here. We're talking about people who claim the same authority as the 12. Yeah. Um, yeah.